Another edition of Outside Shots presented by TheLines.com and BetMGM Sportsbook with Stephen Andrus. I'm Eli Herskovich. Remember, if you want to bet any of our picks here on Outside Shots today, you can use BetMGM promo code TheLines. You bet $5, you get $150 in bonus bets. Simple as that. Terms and conditions over at TheLines.com. You can find all of our bets in real time in the Lines Discord channel. The link is over at TheLines.com in the top right-hand corner. Remember to give the video a thumbs up and ring the bell to get notifications on YouTube whenever we release any sports betting videos, including our NBA show with Coast to Coast. Josh and Nate do a great job with our NBA picks. Steven, it is one of, I won't say the best time of the year, but one of the best times of the year. I mean, if this was, you know, a fight card, this is like the co-main event, right? As we get into the conference tournaments and then we'll get into selection Sunday. I cannot wait. I know you and I are firing off some some futures bets in conference tournaments. And I also know we got an outstanding guest for this time of the year as well. Absolutely. He is Rocco Miller at Rocco Miller 8 on X. College basketball bracketologist specialist and an analyst founder of bracketeer.org, which has bracketology updates pretty much bi-weekly at this point, if not more as we get down the home stretch. And he is as familiar with mid-major conference tournament and betting tips for that matter as anyone you will find out there in the college basketball space. What is going on, Rocco? All sorts of everything, man. I uh, was just telling you guys before, thanks for the having me back. I had a great time doing this last year. Um, got back late last night from a mock selection committee weekend, which was a marathon. I think we were on, it's all on YouTube if you want to look it up, but it was a great experience. Six of us that have been doing it, all of us for a decade or longer. So you just had so much experience with different bracket research, history, data, et cetera. Um, we did five hours Friday night, nine hours Saturday and went to the Creighton Marquette game in between meetings and then another four hour recap, uh, yesterday, Sunday and did a, our final bracket at the end. So I wouldn't suggest anybody go watch all 17 hours, but, um, if you're a fan of a team, you can fast forward and back and forth. We have long discussions on any team that could possibly make it not just the 68. So probably about 85 teams in deep detail. So it was, a, it was a good experience, but it's pretty draining, uh, I'll be honest. I can imagine. And it's kind of like you're when you go on an office trip or you have meetings in a certain location, you go on a pizza break, you go on a lunch break, or you binge drink, and you guys decided <laughs> to go to Creighton Marquette. So I don't yes. blame you in that matter. Hopefully you had a couple of beverages watching that game. Great game, Creighton pulling away and covering late. And we'll dive back into the major conference regular season finales later in the week in the second episode of Outside Shots. But Rocco, let's tip things off with the Patriot League tournament, which begins on Tuesday. Colgate, the heavy favorite over at our partners at BetMGM Sportsbook, minus 275. They've won three straight Patriot League tournament championships. Lehigh, right around plus 700, second shortest odds, followed by Boston and American both at 10 to 1, then Lafayette 14 to 1, and Bucknell a little bit of a long shot at 20 to 1, and then followed by a bunch of other programs to round out the Patriot League tournament. So, which team stands out to you? Are you going with the heavy odds on favorite here? Yeah, in, in general, Colgate is impossible to pick against, in my opinion. Um, they're going to get every game at, at home. The interesting thing was, and in the only two losses this year in the Patriot League, they lost them both at home. Uh, to both American and Lafayette. Um, and they could play American in the semis. Um, I think all the wheels have fallen off the Leopards bus. Uh, they are performing as the ninth best team in the league after that. They had the, one of the wildest seasons you'll find anywhere. Uh, I don't even know if they won a non-conference game. Then they started 7-0, and I believe, in Patriot League. And now the wheels are back off. Um, so I'm not concerned about Lafayette as a threat. American tapered off a little bit as well. Um, so I fully expect, uh, perhaps a Bucknell win in that, in that, uh, first round in the four or five game. Uh, Bucknell, uh, playing the second best defense in the league. Colgate actually performing, uh, again, it's all relative and adjusted, but Colgate nationally in the last month of play is performing like a top 50 defense. We always think of Colgate as a heavy offensive team, but they're getting lots of stops in this league. And, um, the only other team really doing that is Bucknell. Uh, so, so I expect Bucknell to get to that semi, uh, but it, you know, both times Colgate played them, it wasn't that competitive. So Colgate should be good to go for the finals. 
And then on the other side of the bracket, I like Lehigh. Um, I'm, I was surprised to hear the odds because I honestly don't look at it. You guys are the experts there. But um, Lehigh just, you know, like I said, Lafayette's looking like they're toast. That's, that's a big rivalry. So if Lafayette's going to wake up, it's going to be in that Lehigh game. Um, but I, I think they'll get by. It is a road game for Lehigh. Uh, and then Boston U played pretty well down the stretch. They played two super tight games. Boston U just won on a buzzer beater. Um, I think that was a week or two ago. I watched it um, in overtime. But I think Lehigh, a little bit more talented. Their numbers in the last month are a little stronger. And I think that actually will give them a little chip on their shoulder to get revenge on the Terriers. People, if you weren't sure we had the right guest for this week's show, <laughs> he just admitted to watching a Boston University game a couple of weeks ago. So I think most of our fans are like, especially in our Discord, Rocco, they're talking about like UConn versus Marquette, Purdue versus Michigan State. <laughs> My man is in the Boston U streets, Rocco. That's right, Stephen, because that other stuff's boring. It gets stale after a while. This never gets boring. We got hundreds of teams to track. Absolutely. So, listen, before we move on, obviously not a ton of intrigue here with the odds when you have a minus 275 favorite, but I want to, I do want to ask you a big picture question here with the Patriot League, and we get this a little bit with some of the mid-majors, unlike some of the major conference tournaments that have the highest ratings next week. The Patriot League tournament, quarterfinals are on Thursday, then there's two days off, then you have the semifinal round on Sunday, and then two days off again in the championship game on a Wednesday. So when you're getting that rest in between games, does that make you less likely to take an underdog in a format like that? It just depends on the team still. Um, you want to look at the coaching, uh, the coaching in the league. And, um, you know, Colgate clearly has always had the best coaching in this league. And uh, that just gives the better coaching uh, more, more prep time. So I'd equate it to like out here, I'm in the Bay Area. Randy Bennett's just one of the greatest game preppers I've ever been around. If you gave him three days per round like this format, um, they would, they would probably beat everybody. Um, it's actually when St. Mary struggles, for example, is when they have to do quicker turnarounds. Uh, and I think, I think that's only going to help Colgate more, to be honest with you. Yeah, fair enough. Okay, let's move on to the Horizon League here, Eli. And I know that um, you know we both are intrigued here. Rocco teased us a little bit, so take us through the futures here, Eli. Yeah, really quickly, I want to have one note now since you got one in Sure, it. sure. On the Patriot League. Man, Rocco, how long does it feel like Keegan Records and Jeff Woodward have been at Colgate? Because I feel like I've watched these guys for a decade manning that front court now. Oh, I know. I, I hear you. I can't believe they're still – players left from that bubble tournament when um, – who was it? Was that when they played Arkansas and they had a, a nice 14-point lead and then all of a sudden Arkansas decided to start pressing and, and, and Colgate ended up losing by 20? Right. Uh, I, I feel and like these Colgate, guys are on that team. 100%. And Colgate probably should have beat Wisconsin the following year. Luckily, the Luckbox Badgers lost to Iowa State in the second round, round of 32. But I digress. <laughs> that was a great like draw for mentioned, Yeah. Absolutely. Let's move on to the Horizon League tournament. One quick question before we start off, since this tournament is sponsored by Bar Barbasol, apparently. How many <laughs> of us use Barbasol shaving cream in the early mornings? Anybody? Oh, I'm, I'm a cheap bastard. I will pay for the Barbasol and not more. I am not a premium. Like there are certain things that I will pay premium for Eli, but shaving cream is not one of them. So <laughs> Barbasol. Barbasol, one of the few uh, inflation proof items left in our economy. What about you, Racco? Uh, if I'm in a pinch and I'm traveling, I forget to pack something. I might Barbasol it up, uh, but otherwise not. Nah. Wow. <laughs> so what, what is your shaving cream of choice? Um, honestly, I got one of the electric ones. I, I rarely use shaving cream unless it's, uh, like I said, I forget something. And that's, that's my reason. Oh, okay. So you're one of those people. That that's right. Man's See, tough he's, mad. he's more economical than I am. He's like the Costco of shaving, man. He gets like the <laughs> expensive razor that will save him money over time as opposed to the shaving cream. It oh, actually worked well, out that way. It wasn't planned. I was at, I was on a trip in Scottsdale. I had to be at a nice event and clean up a little bit, and I didn't bring anything. So I went to this shaving store, whatever they call I don't know. It's totally built for shaving. 
I didn't, I should have known, but it, they charged me like almost 300 bucks for an electric shaver, but I was only sold on it. I needed it badly. And I'm like, all right, I'm using this for like the next decade because I can't even justify spending that much on a shaver. Um, so I, yeah, I've been using that thing ever since that was probably five years ago. But you've probably saved at least four hundred dollars in shaving cream over that five years, so you, you've come there out ahead. Go. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> what a conversation! Gotta love. This is our version of going to the Creighton Marquette game, talking about shaving cream here. But <laughs> as we stick in the Horizon League tournament, Rocco Youngstown State is the favorite at plus one eighty, despite losing both games to Oakland in the regular season. Oakland following suit, right around plus two fifty over at BetMGM. Then Wright State, plus 300. And if we look at home court advantage, and there's going to be reseeding in the quarterfinals, and then once you get to the semifinal and the title game, both of those rounds are in Indianapolis. Now, the one thing I want to know for this tournament, I know Steven has a bet that we'll get to in just a second, but Oakland, second shortest odds, and Greg Campy runs that infamous zone defense, allowing the highest perimeter scoring rate in this conference, especially in conference play, and you look at the potential second round matchup, or at least in the quarterfinals, looking ahead, I should say semifinals, third time's the charm, uh, what could happen against Wright State, the best three-point shooting team in this conference. So that's kind of my look, third shortest odds at Wright State. Not saying I'm betting on it just yet, but Steven, what, where are you going for this conference? Yeah, I I went crazy long shot here. I went with UW-Milwaukee, and um, I think as we record here Monday afternoon, you can get around 20, 22 to 1. Uh, If you look hard enough, there are some odds boosts out there that you can use on conference futures that will get it up more in like the 30 to 1 range. But your point's exactly. It's not a fixed bracket, and as the highest-seeded team in the first round, if they win – and all they got to do is beat one win Detroit Mercy to do that, one of the two worst teams in Division One. then they are guaranteed to avoid the top two seeds in the quarterfinals. And on top of that, Milwaukee's season-long defensive rating looks bad on paper because they were bad in the non-conference. But if you look at Haslametrics, their profile on defense has steadily been on the upswing since January. They've won five of six. Three of their last four losses have been in overtime, so a bit unlucky there. And three of Milwaukee's losses to the conference's top two seeds were in overtime. So if they get to that point where they have to face one of the top two seeds, they've shown they can go right to the final rounds with those two teams. So um, second best defensive team in the conference by effective field goal percentage, two point field goal percentage, block percentage. And even though they're not one of the better shooting teams in the league, they are the best offensive rebounding team in the conference. So I just thought at this at this price with this tournament format, I'd take a shot at a long shot here, Rocco. Yeah, um, I get that, and I, I think you know the way I look at each of these is I, I still have to go matchup by matchup, and with with the way it played out for me, I was a little surprised at the end. Um, but with the receding, you know, so for the first round, I actually think it'll be chalk. Um, you have IUPUI and Detroit Mercy in the mix. So really hard to pick either of those two teams. Um, and really interestingly, we have several rematches from the season finale in these openers. Mm-hmm. Um, if you look at uh, Cleveland State versus Youngstown State, they just played. Robert Morris and Purdue Fort Wayne just played. And uh, the IUPUI Cleveland State as well. Sorry, not the Youngstown Cleveland State. I meant to say, uh, where are we at with the 4-5 here? Uh, it's the uh, Wright State Northern Kentucky, I believe. So... Uh, a lot of, a lot of rematches coming up here. And, um, so I just to fast track it a little bit. I got chalk in the, in that early round. Now we get to Fort Wayne versus Oakland and Fort Wayne is actually performing in the last, you know, month or so, last eight games, let's just say, uh, as the best team in the league, if you could believe it. Um, they've really cleaned up their ball handling. Uh, they're, they're getting great looks from close, um, 12th in the country in two point field goal percentage in the last 25 days of action, eight games worth. And they split, they, they dominated Oakland at Oakland way earlier this year when Fort Wayne was on fire. Um, it's a team that I've been picking since the preseason and the, and the media picked them eighth. They ended up finishing eighth. So the media is smarter than me, but, um, Rashid Bellows is a, a, an amazing talent came from uh, Wisconsin Parkside. In fact, Eli probably knew that. Um, and I think, 
Uh, this is a good matchup for them. I think it's enough to blow it up. Um, otherwise, if Oakland wins it, uh, I probably would take Oakland all the way. So I think this is the key game for the Golden Grizz uh, right away, uh, as long as Fort Wayne gets by Robert Morris in the early round. Um, but in the rest of the quarterfinals, um, I certainly have some other surprises. I'm with you on Milwaukee, so Milwaukee would play Green Bay in that round. And Green Bay is leaking oil down the stretch, mainly because Noah Reynolds has been sitting out. And he's questionable going into Thursday night. He's he's there everything. Um, Milwaukee, again, this will be another rematch from the season finale. Um, Milwaukee bloodied them up uh, just, you know, last weekend. And there was a, a situation earlier this year in the first matchup where after the horn, uh, B.J. Freeman, Milwaukee's one of their stars, and Noah uh, Reynolds chased each other to the locker room in a fight. And, they, and since Noah sat out this last game, there's going to be some real bad blood uh, in that game. Um, but I think, you know, if, if Noah doesn't play, Milwaukee's certainly got the edge. And if Noah does play, he's still probably not 100%. I just think Milwaukee's got the bigger chip on the shoulder in that one. So that's a very specific game uh, matchup pick for me. And then uh, Youngstown, Cleveland State, I, that's the only one I'll take the favorite in because I do think Youngstown's a, a notch above and they get to play it at home. I like the Penguins there. Uh, and I'll go with another upset. Uh, Northern Kentucky did get beat twice by Wright State this year, but both games have been right down to the wire. And Northern Kentucky always seems to do great in this tournament. Um, I think that it's going to be really hard for Wright State to beat them a third time. So I'm going to go with the Norse there. And that shakes up all the matchups for the semis, guys, <laughs> because we have yeah. reseeding. So now I've got Youngstown playing Fort Wayne. They split. They're very evenly matched if you watch those two matchups. Um, I'm going to roll with Fort Wayne. They've just been more consistent down the stretch here. Again, the eight seed, so a lot of value there. And then on the other side of the bracket, um, I'm going to actually take – that's where I'm going to have Milwaukee lose uh, to Northern Kentucky. Again, Darren Horn is so good at coaching these tournaments and getting his guys to slow down possessions. It works out well for the format. And um, in the championship game, uh, Fort, Fort Wayne matches up well with Northern Kentucky again. And so my, my surprise pick here is the Mastodons to uh, take down the title for, from all the way from the first round to the championship game Tuesday, March 12th. Wow. There's your long shot if you're looking for one. If you don't like mine, there's another one. Maybe maybe <laughs> I'll bet them both because they're going to be really good numbers on both of them, I would assume. And the, and the larger point here is there's about six to seven teams that can win it. The only one I don't think probably will win it is Green Bay unless – Somehow Noah Reynolds shows up on Thursday and he never looks back and he's 100. percent But otherwise, I I would I would stay away from Green Bay due to that. Yeah, and just one more note on this before we move on. Again, with the schedule of the tournament, first round Tuesday, quarterfinals Thursday, then a couple days off between the semifinals and finals, which are in consecutive days on Monday and Tuesday. Let's move forward here to the Ohio Valley Conference. Futures there have a favorite over the field. Moorhead State, minus 110. The other top four teams in terms of the futures here, Little Rock, plus 225. UT Martin at plus 400. Western Illinois at 10 to 1. Everybody else in this bracket longer than that. Uh, Rocco, where's your head go when you hear those odds that Moorhead State is favored over the entire field here in the odds? Well, you know, I didn't realize until I started doing the prep for the show that that Moorhead got uh, Drew Thelwall back uh, in the finale. I was surprised by that because I, I know some of the staff members there, and I know he, he missed the game before. It sounded like his injury in practice was going to knock him out for the season. And he played a full load of minutes in the Lindenwood finale. Um, so that, that, to me, tells me it's going to be really hard to pick against Moorhead now. Um, I was, I'm feeling really good about Little Rock, too. Little Rock is playing a top 20 level defensively. Uh, of course, have power five uh, talent with K.K. Robinson and Mikhail Mitchell. Uh, unbelievable rim protection. And I think if we get to that Little Rock-Moorhead final, it's going to be an epic game. Um, so I did pick Little Rock in my Jerome uh, pick yesterday. Um, but now that I saw that Thelwell's back, for Moorhead, I, I think I got to take Moorhead. I think I'm switching it. Um, the other team to watch, UT Martin. They come in on a seven-game win streak. Uh, they were able to, you know, they were they were able to beat Moorhead once themselves, and that would be the semifinal. 
Um, so I don't, I don't know, you know, what kind of value you get on UT Martin, but I, I do think those are the three that can win it. There's a huge drop off in quality after those three. Um, but if you're looking for maybe an early round upset, I think Eastern Illinois has played better. I fully expect uh, them as the seven to beat the six, uh, which which is SIU Edwardsville. I, I like EIU quite a bit in that round. Eli, this is at least a bracket where the top two seeds get buys all the way to the semifinals. So, more, I mean, theoretically, if you want to take Moorhead, you're getting them at minus 110 and they have to play an extra game, right? So yeah. if if theoretically that could be one reason not to pick them, but uh, any any strong opinions here before we move on? Yeah, I think Rocco's perception of Little Rock is spot on. That was actually the team I was eyeing, and they're red hot down the stretch too on a nine-game winning streak. Yep. Defensively, as Rocco mentioned, second and adjusted defensive efficiency and per Haslam's numbers as well over at Haslametrics when you look at the full body of work at that end of the floor throughout this conference. So it's not maybe the Chris Beard level of Little Rock defense that we saw, what, five, six years ago against Purdue in the round of 64 with that upset. But I think if I had to pick one, I don't know if I'm necessarily going to bet anything, Stephen, with these conference tournament futures in the OVC, but I think it would be Little Rock if I had to pick. Yeah, fair enough. I I can't argue with you guys, especially in the fact that they get one fewer game than Moorhead and avoid Moorhead until the final, theoretically, here, right? Like, that's the other side of this. So So you could hedge. You could hedge if you want to go that route and take Little Rock Futures and then maybe get, whether it's, you know, uh, a steeper money line price. Right, exactly. Yeah, I like that thought, too. You might have talked me into it. So, all right, let's move forward here to the Sun Belt Conference. And James Madison is the favorite here, plus 110. Behind them on the futures table, App State plus 200, Troy at plus 600, Arkansas State at plus 700, Louisiana 14 to 1. Everybody else longer odds than that. Rocco looking at the bracket here. Uh, this is another one where we have a day off between the second round and the quarterfinals, and then it's just your traditional schedule, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, with the championship on Monday, March 11th here. Uh, what is your first thought when you see this bracket? Well, there's a lot of first thoughts hit for this one, but I, you know, traditionally, mm-hmm. I think it's really important to call out uh, that this, this term is played in Pensacola, and uh, Louisiana Lafayette head coach Bob Marlin's a legend there. Uh, he did a lot of politicking to get this conference tournament moved to Pensacola. And you saw, I think it was last year, Louisiana won this thing. Uh, so he feels at home there. And, you know, the, this, I think this is the third year they've done it there. And, I, and he, even though it's not near Lafayette, Louisiana, they have a huge contingency pulling for him. Um, and that's, that's always an interesting thing to keep in mind. The other thing going on, uh, in the Sun Belt, well, there's lots of things going on. Uh, just announced this morning, Jay Ladner, Southern Miss head coach, is going to try to return from his health issues to coach. So maybe you get an inspired Southern Miss team, but a Southern Miss team is also full of NIL players that you're not sure how much they care. So really interesting stuff going on for the, for the Golden Eagles. Um, and then of course the big, the big topic in bracket, uh, bracketology land, over on Bracketeer is James Madison, who is still sitting there with only three losses on the year, got swept by Appalachian State, lost at uh, Southern Miss, but besides that, went perfect in non-conference, had that big win at Michigan State. They had the Sun Belt Mac Challenge. James Madison beat Akron, who was their best team, and they also beat Kent State on the road. So there's a lot of debate about if they will be an at-large uh, selection or not, uh, should they not win this tournament. Um, so that's that's probably the biggest storyline. Um, but beyond that, you know, going matchup by by matchup, I think the sleepers to watch coming in are South Alabama and Texas State, both playing a lot better in the last seven, eight games or so. Um, but they both didn't get the greatest brackets. Um, I do think Texas State, uh, they, they'll play Old Dominion that early round, should be no problem. Old Dominion just got a new coach a couple days ago, so they're pretty much done. And um, when Southern Miss plays Troy, that's going to be really difficult because uh, I'm sorry. When Texas State plays Southern Miss, that's going to be difficult because we don't know, like I said about the Southern Miss situation. Are they going to come out inspired or not? I don't know, but I think Texas State will play well. Um, so that's that's for you to decide. Uh, and then in the next round, Troy is very tough. They were my initial pick to win this. 
I backpedaled a little bit, and I w- I'm going to go with James Madison to win uh, coming out of that side of the bracket. And on the top side, I do have Louisiana Lafayette, just to fast track this a little bit, um, coming out of that side, mainly because I I know they're not playing their greatest ball here down the stretch, but they're defensive first-minded. I got to cover their game against James Madison down in the Cajun Dome in January. Um, and they have, they have a great, tough-minded group of guys, and they're built for an event for, like this, plus the whole Pensacola factor. So if you're looking for a little bit of a long shot, the Cajuns are, in my opinion, a good one. Um, and then South Alabama Appalachian State, I expect to be in the quarters on Saturday morning or Saturday afternoon, their time. And um, that could be a really good good game, the way South Alabama's playing lately. Um, but I, I'll, I'll take App State to get to the semis and then lose to the Cajuns. Eli, I think what was interesting to me about this bracket, too, with number two, James Madison, the three seed, Troy, uh, I was, they haven't played each other this year, right? I, I can't remember the last time I've seen a situation like that with a conference tournament where two teams potentially haven't played each other. So it's just, just an interesting wrinkle in this bracket as well. Yeah, I will say I want to counter Rocco a little bit on App State just because I've been high on this team all season long going oh, back yeah. to when they beat – Elite, elite defense, man. 33rd in Haslametrics defensive efficiency ranking. When that when they upset Auburn at home in non-conference play, I think in mid-December, that was kind of the telling point to me, which I expected from App State maybe preseason when I was going through my numbers. But I'm very high on this team at that end of the floor. Just an elite defense. I know La Tech gets yeah. their flowers when you think about mid-major defenses in the upper echelon ones, but App State may be the best, at least when you look at some of the lower-ranked mid-major programs. Like, the first time they played James Madison this season, and you think about James Madison being an elite three-point shooting team, which they undoubtedly are, but App State only allowed 17 three-point attempts, and James Madison shot three of 17. They run you off the three-point line, which is obviously the Duke's biggest advantage on a game-by-game basis now. No, I agree. I, I, my bigger concern is App State away from home. Um, they, they obviously took care of Old Dominion and Marshall at the end, but they haven't played a road game uh, before since then until the beginning of February where they split with Georgia Southern and Texas State. Had to go to overtime with Georgia Southern. Lost at Texas State after that. Obviously a brutal uh, stretch there. But um, earlier in the year as well, when they lost to Northern Illinois and Oregon State at the start of the year, both on the road, both those teams ended up not being good teams. Lost to UNC Asheville and Hickory, North Carolina at that uh, community college gym. And, um, of course, lost at Troy early. I, I just think this is a, a – the big win was at James Madison. I just think those two teams have bad blood for each other. Good matchup, obviously, for the Mountaineers. And I agree. It is barely a better uh, defense than Troy of late. Um, and that's going to carry well in a tournament. And App State, of course, can win this tournament. Uh, but I, I, that was where my concerns were with them is how much damage are they capable of on a consistent basis away from Boone? Absolutely. Great points by you. Let's shift over to Thursday, the Missouri Valley Conference Tournament, at least in the Midwest, later in the week. Indiana State, the favorite, plus 165 over at BetMGM Sportsbook. Drake, plus 200, then Bradley, plus 300. Northern Iowa, which beat Southern Illinois for that final buy in this conference tournament at 10 to 1. Belmont, 18 to 1. Southern Illinois, the aforementioned Salukis at 25 to 1. By the way, I know we've been talking about the Jerome, but anybody that wants to get their conference tournament selections in, we have two sets of conference tournament pickums, which is free, and you could sign up over at play.thelines.com to win prizes. In this conference tournament, looking at some potential long shots, Rocco. So first off, I know everyone's going to be in love with the Sycamores because because they have Robbie Avila, who I saw on Twitter last week was coined Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Just a great nickname that I think I'm going to have to steal since it wasn't trademarked quite yet. But the one thing I want to ask you about before I dig into my long shot, looking at the Sycamores in particular, what do you make of Isaiah Swope's knee injury? Because... That's one of the more underrated storylines going into this tournament for me. I know he kind of got back on track with his shooting efficiency in the regular season finale against Murray State, but he was the opposite, very inefficient over his final four games. He's not going to be having surgery until the offseason. Their second leading score behind Avila. How much do you think this affects the Sycamores in particular in the MVC tournament? 
Well, if he, it, it, it appears to me since he's had the injury uh, that they're, you know, it's hard to say because they played a little bit of inferior competition with UIC Evansville, played decently well against a, a decent Murray State team. But, yeah, we'll, we'll see because I think what we'll get into here in a second is there's four or five other teams in this bracket that are starting to fire on all cylinders. And, um, you know, Indiana State's play in general – uh, since they got through that that last straight game, has has dropped off some. Of course, took two losses during that stretch. One of them, a, you would call a bad loss at home to Illinois State, at least for a resume standpoint. So, so yeah, there's there's some concerns there in, as a whole. But I thought when um, when they lost to Illinois State and Jason Kent went down, that's I think Jason Kent's probably their most important player because he does so much uh, rebounding. Just ball distributing, uh, diff, uh, one of their best defenders. So if he's okay and Swope can go through the motions, maybe not s- shoot it as well, they'll still be a, a pretty high-level team. Absolutely. Now, with that said, I'm going to take an upset to win this conference tournament. So this is my Ooh. first official conference tournament futures bets, futures bet here on Outside Shots. Belmont. I'm taking the Belmont Bruins, <laughs> who, by the way, lost to Indiana State in the quarters. So going through this for me with the Bruins, A, they're the highest rated team per Haslam in the MVC since February 6th, then per my ratings too. Six and one during that stretch, 41st adjusted offense and 51st adjusted defensive efficiency. Top five in both categories, by the way, throughout league play. Best shooting team in the Valley by a pretty decent margin, and they play a five-out offense. Jacoby Gillespie has been phenomenal this season. Top 135 assist rate, top 80 steal percentage, and he's shooting just under 40% from deep. Arguably one of the best and most underrated point guards when it comes to the mid-major level, and maybe across every single college basketball team in division one, they would get Northern Iowa in the quarters, assuming they beat Valpo in the first leg of the MVC tournament. Remember they lost Northern Iowa in their second meeting against the Panthers, but they didn't have Gillespie in that matchup and they lost the game by 11 as a result. Then they would get Indiana state potentially in the quarters or in the semis, I should say, if they play Northern Iowa in the quarters and Haslam actually projects Belmont as a six point dog to Indiana state, but they have the Northern, Northern Iowa game as a pick them. So you're, I think you're getting pretty good value with Belmont at 18 to one to win, to win this conference tournament. Wow. And keep in mind, they could play up tempo with Indiana state, pretty high adjusted pace per Kempom. I really like this team, man. You play five out, you create a lot of mismatches. And again, you could play at a fast pace, which is going to be key against Indiana State if they do indeed play them in the semifinals. So backtracking a bit, you laughed at the Belmont pick. I'm assuming this could be one of your long shot plays here in the MVC tournament. Yeah, I didn't didn't mean to laugh so loud. I just was, I had a feeling you were going (laughs) here. And uh, we think a lot alike in uh, these areas, Eli. So it's always awesome. Yeah, Belmont's my pick as well. Um, and it's, uh, for a lot of the same reasons, I felt like you were reading right off my note sheet. It was, that was, a, that was <laughs> nice. a fun, that was a fun journey you took me on. But, um, one other really important note that I think never gets talked about before the Missouri Valley, and I notice it every year in Arch Madness, is the format of the semis and finals. So you have a situation on Saturday, you play a doubleheader CBS Sports Network on the cable version. And whoever has to play the later game, you pl- you turn around and you play an even earlier game in the championship on built for TV CBS. In a lot of cases, the team on that side of the bracket, and I have to go back and do historicals, um, will come out a little flat and you'll see a blowout in the championship game. And so Belmont being the five, they're on the good side of that. If they can get to the semis, you know, they're obviously going to have to get that huge win against likely Indiana State. Um They'll actually have the advantage in the championship game where they probably have to play Drake or Bradley. And that's, you know, that's not going to be easy either. And here's the other thing. I think Northern Iowa is playing almost as good as Belmont. So if you want to look at the Panthers, they, they might have just as good of a shot or, or almost as good of a shot. I just think the one thing that blew my mind, uh, you guys is go look at, uh, since Gillespie came back from his injury, 
Go look at his O rating in those games. Like, through the roof in every single game. Um, and then you have Malik Dia, who uh, NBA scouts are drooling over. They, they can run stuff through him at the high post. He's, he's a great roller. Um, elite rim protector, NBA, NBA is drooling about him. I wouldn't be surprised if he sneaks into the first round. I did, not my area of expertise, but I did sit, sit by scouts when I covered Belmont's game against Arkansas State back in December. Uh, so <clears throat> anyway, I, I love the, the momentum of Belmont. I feel like Indiana State's kind of plateaued plus the injury situation. And, you know, Drake's playing very well and could easily win this thing as well. Uh, and, and never count out Bradley with Brian Wardle. He's won this event twice. So going to be awesome. All right. So, so Rocco, I'm going to ask Eli to pull back the curtain here a little bit because to, to let everybody know, he has been debating this conference for about a week now because he loves the Valley, loves Longer. Arch Madness. Longer. Yeah, it has been two weeks, hasn't it? So trying <laughs> to figure out who, we, who his pick's going to be here because of all the mid-major tournaments, he loves this one. And I can tell you that with uh, – in addition to Belmont, he was also considering Bradley for a little bit. He was considering Southern Illinois. So, Eli, give us like a sentence or two on ultimately why you did not pick Bradley in Southern Illinois. Well, Bradley just matches up so poorly with Drake, which is the likely semifinal matchup. And then SIU, just turnovers, man. I mean, a, I think it's just so hard. I mean, it historically is. Rocco brought up some great historical nuggets, especially when you look back at previous MVC title games and b- just blowouts over the last five years to almost a decade in that title game, which is why the maybe it's my only hesitation with Belmont just because it's so hard to win four straight in any conference tournament, especially in the MVC. But they get Valpo in the first round, which, knock on wood, should be a buy essentially. So unless they stub their toe and get into one of these unexpected close matchups, it could be a little bit of a concern before the Northern Iowa game, but that's kind of my overall synopsis on why I went with Belmont. I'm concerned with Southern Illinois turnover specifically with Xavier Johnson. Who's one of the best scorers across college basketball. He's made a huge jump from last year to this year. And then, Bradley, I just don't trust in that semifinal matchup. So if we get Belmont Drake, man, that would be a hell of a title game. I might have to hedge a little bit on my conference tournament futures with Belmont, but that's my logic behind that pick. Is that fair? Sounds sounds fair to me. I mean, uh, just just to put a period on your point about the turnaround on the bottom side of that bracket, you know, just doing math on tip off and end of game and whatnot. Like the earliest those teams are getting back to the hotel is probably ten. 10 o'clock or later, and then the championship game is 1 p.m. the next day. So just to put some time stamps on that for everybody. Um, Eli, let's get into the Colonial here, man. Go for it. Yeah, CAA odds, Rocco. Charleston plus 210. UNC Wilmington plus 325. Second shortest odds. Keep in mind, they fell to Charleston in last year's conference tournament. And Trezarian White, 19.6 points per game, 7.0 rebounds per game. He really helped lead that UNC Wilmington upset over Kentucky in non-conference play. Hofstra plus 325, Drexel plus 350. Let's wrap up quickly here with these two picks, Rocco, in the finale of our mid-major conference tournament previews. What do you like in the CAA? Yeah, so I think it's almost chalky for me, um, surprisingly, because you would think with so many teams, so many variables – uh, my biggest upsets are in the, the first round, the really early round. I would take both William and Mary and I'm, I'm leaning towards Hampton. I think playing in Washington, DC, Hampton's going to come out fired up. Um, them and Elon are, uh, you know, pretty even actually. It's a coin flip game in my book. So I think location can matter. A team like Hampton getting to play in DC is kind of cool. Why not get that win? And have a good feeling. Um, but I think when it comes down to it, the, the the super sleeper, in my opinion, I'm not picking them to win. I can't even see them beating Drexel. But I like the way they play, and they've got a streaky set of shooting um, where if they get hot, they could make a run. Stony Brook, um, that's the team I like a lot. They they played really tough over the weekend, kind of hot down the stretch. Um, but I think them running into Drexel and everything Drexel can do, it's probably a tough 2-7 matchup. Um, so I couldn't pick it. I, I did end up taking Drexel. Hofstra closed so strong, and you can debate how much effort they put into the Charleston finale because the, the one seed was already clinched. Um, 
and I, I really wanted to pick Hofstra. I think there's the most value based on everything you said, Eli, on Hofstra, but I'm, I am going to stick with Charleston. Charleston's just become a machine. They're finally um, clicking on all cylinders. They've gotten better every month of the season. I covered them at the Myrtle Beach Invitational when they couldn't hit a shot to save their butts, um, losing to teams like Vermont down there. Um, they've gotten so much better. And, you know, Pat Kelsey such a motivational guy. Uh, I, I just – his name's in the hat for some bigger jobs, too. They've, they've got all the motivation in the world to get this done. Rocco, thanks for joining us. I know you have to bolt to another radio interview. Thank you so much for your insight on these conference tournaments. One more conference tournament that Eli and I want to get to here. The Summit. Eli, it's been a long show. It's been an informative show, but we've reached the Summit. Bet MGM, South Dakota State, the favorite, plus 180. St. Thomas, plus 200. UMKC, that's Kansas City, if you're following at home, plus 500. North Dakota, plus 700. Everybody else, longer odds than that. Looking at the bracket, Eli, it is a fixed bracket. What is interesting to me here is that the two favorites in the odds are on the same side of the bracket. So literally, it's impossible for the two favorites in the odds to meet in the championship game. When that happens... I'm a sucker for trying to take a number on the other side and trying to figure out who's going to get to the championship game. And then if I'm right, decide what to do once we get to that championship game. The team I landed on was Kansas City and a couple of reasons why they begin with Denver, a team it beat twice by double digits in the regular season. The Ruse would then face either North Dakota or Omaha in the semis. They split with North Dakota, but they swept Omaha and the latest win over North Dakota was in the midst of their big winning streak right now, and it was an 18-point win. They killed them. So just holistically here, Kansas City, number one in the conference in defensive efficiency, expected field goal percentage defense and takeaway percentage. That's during conference play. It will need to overcome some offensive shooting concerns, but they are at least number two in summit play in offensive rebounding percentage and free throw percentage. So listen, I didn't watch one second of Kansas City Ruse basketball this year. I'm not going to lie to you, but just kind of trying to figure out who I want to take on the other side of a conference tournament where the two favorites are on one side of the bracket. That's who I landed on. Maybe I'm right. Maybe I'm wrong. But this is just something I like to do in betting when the opportunity presents itself. Yeah. And maybe UNKC gets to the title game. I just have a hard time betting against South Dakota State. So if you want to hedge down the road, I would consider it. This team underwent a lot of negative variance when it came to health last season. And for the most part, William Kyle has been on the floor a lot more than he was last season dealing with an early season injury. But Zeke Mayo, an elite point guard, top 430 assist rate, which may not sound like a big deal. But when you look at this conference compared to the higher rated mid-major conferences and across college basketball, for that matter, he's a really solid point guard and an elite scorer at that at least juxtaposed to some of these mid-major conferences. So UMKC definitely has a shot to make a run. I just like South Dakota State's outlook, and I have a hard time seeing them lose if they get to the title game just because this team is so talented. I mean, you look back at last year, this season they didn't necessarily play as well in non-conference play, but last season, I mean, they had a gauntlet when it came to – came to their non-conference schedule and that's where I give Eric Henderson a lot of credit a really really good coach playing Arkansas last year they won at Boise State a game where they lost in the regular season opener against Akron where they dealt with a lot of crappy negative variants for uh, to be specific on both sides so I think the Jackrabbits end up winning this conference tournament but if you want to take a little bit more of a dart I don't hate UMKC yeah, it, it makes sense, right? Like South Dakota State is top two, top three in the conference in offensive and defensive efficiency in conference play. They're top two in both um, expect um, if, if, excuse me effective field goal percentage offense and effective field goal percentage defense. So, you know, it makes sense that they are among the favorites there. And uh, for what it's worth, the two teams we talked about are the two hottest teams in the conference. South Dakota State's on a five game winning streak. Kansas City's on a six-game winning streak. So, uh, Eli, as we wrap up here, 
give the people an idea of what is coming from your work at the lines.com. Cause I know as your editor, you are grinding right now and there is a ton of awesome stuff coming from you. Yeah. Conference tournament previews ad nauseum throughout the week. You can get all of them over at the lines.com. We have a sun already up that conference tournament tipped on Monday Patriot league, which we discussed with Rocco on March 5th. So if you're watching and listening, you'll be able to check that out this morning on Tuesday, the OVC big South NEC, my favorite conference tournament, Arch Madness, the Valley, the CAA, SOCON, big sky and Southland, all those previews coming up this week over at the lines.com before we get to next week, with all the major conference tournaments and some mid-major ones like the Mountain West, which could even get five or six teams into the NCAA tournament. So check that out. Read them. Check out the lines.com Outside Shots podcast. This podcast later in the week to get the regular season finale of the major conference tournament games and some of the picks and projections we have towards Saturday, especially with a big one with Duke and UNC coming up. And also for anybody that's in the Tar Heel state, you can get a bevy of North Carolina betting promos over at yep. the lines.com for our pre-launch setup with North Carolina. Yeah. Launch date is March 11th, Monday, March 11th in North Carolina. So if you or a friend who likes sports betting lives in North Carolina, you get more if you sign up before March 11th. And there's a tab right at the top of the lines.com homepage for North Carolina sports betting. There's up to 900 hours in pre-live offers for bonus bets. Go do that now. There's still going to be a ton of stuff as well after pre-live, but the best way to maximize it is to get what's being offered now. And then on March 11th, it'll all be in your account ready for you uh, when the sports books officially open for business on Monday, the 11th for Eli Hershkovich. I'm Steven Andres. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks so much for listening. Best of luck with your bets. It's March. It's awesome. Cannot wait. See you next time.